My dear viewer, we welcome again today to our quarter days of prayer series of messages. And thank you so much for being part of this ministry every single day. I am here for you this morning one more time. The Lord has blessed us and I thank you for many of you who are calling me and texting me and telling me how this is blessing you. And I also appreciate those of you who are saying, Pastor, we are praying for you. Thank you so much. May you keep praying for me. We need each other in this ministry. Now, as I said yesterday, today we are introducing uh, another series of messages that is centered on Christ and his righteousness. And to start us off, we will be looking at a very beautiful text of the book of Revelation and Isaiah, just to gather our thoughts and get our focus onto what we shall be discussing for the next one week. But before we get there, let's seek the Lord in prayer. Our gracious Father in heaven, we thank you so much for this yet another week when we begin a new series in our 40 days of prayer, looking at the righteousness of Christ. Lord, I pray that you will be with us and bless us and speak to us through me. May I not be seen or heard, may I be, you be heard as you speak to us all, reviving us, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. This is day 20. Day 20, and we are... Uh, are glad to have this discussion this morning and the title is get up and glow get up and glow now the text of a book of isaiah uh, chapter um, 57 and verse 15 i'll read for thus is the high and lofty one that had inhabited eternity whose name is holy I dwell in the high and holy place with him also that is of contrite and humble spirit to revive the spirit of the humble and to revive the heart of the contrite ones. I'll read one more time. Isaiah chapter 57 and verse 15 as we are looking at Christ of righteousness and the sub theme, get up and glow. For thus is the high and lofty one that inhabiteth eternity, whose name is holy. I dwell in the high and holy place with him also that is of contrite and humble spirit, to revive the spirit of the humble and to revive the heart of the contrite ones. Of course, we know chapter 60 of Isaiah is that beautiful you know, passage in the Bible from verse number one. It says, Arise, shine, for thy light has come. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. Both these two texts, God is speaking about his own light, his own righteousness. That those who shall live righteous life, they won't be righteous because they invented the way of righteousness. They won't be righteous because they worked out their way of right to their righteousness but they have received, they have been imputed, they have been given, they have been dressed with the righteousness of Christ. This rise and shine, meaning the light is here. You are not to look for the light. The light is here. It is you to just rise and shine because it is provided for you. And I want to read um, the book of, of course, Revelation chapter 18, verse number one, then I'll wrap up the three uh, texts and then we'll get time to pray. Now, Revelation chapter 18 and verse number 1 says, And after these things I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power. And the earth was lightened with his glory. The earth was lightened with his glory. Now, when you look at this one, the angel appears and comes to speak to the, the earth and says the entire, you know, earth was lightened. This angel is coming from God, is lightened with his glory. That the glory that we're talking about, the light we're talking about, arise and shine. Or when he says in chapter 57 and verse number 15, For thus is the high and lofty one that inhabited the eternity, whose name is holy. I dwell in the high and holy place. Now, the righteousness is as a result of holiness of God. Now, God, the Bible here in Isaiah chapter 57, 15 says he is holy and inhabits holiness. 
he stays in, he, he endures holiness. You know, his presence, his environment, his, his, his house, his room, his, his, his village, his, his community, his environment, his atmosphere, his holiness. Huh. And, and so when God speaks, he speaks holiness because he himself is holiness and he dwells in holiness. And so when we come to him, then this is what happens. When we go to God, then we automatically enter into the space of holiness. He says, come to me, even though your sins are as red as blood. Uh, even though you are as, uh, uh, as filthy and, and, and as, as dirty and, and as ragged and, and, and as old as, 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 you know, he says, come to me. Because it is so easy to understand. Once you step where he is, you step into the environment of righteousness. Now, let me tell you, you know, you're not able to see uh, exactly the environment I'm in. Let, let, me, let me try to create a picture of where I am in. You know, this is my church, and this is the pulpit where I preach from. But from both sides are lights that are shining on me. You are not able to see that light. But where I am, I'm lighted more than any other place in this sanctuary. Now, if you come anywhere near where I am, you are lighted from both sides. The light that come is shining on me. You see, God says he is, he is, he is holy. He, he inhibits the environment of holiness, the environment of righteousness. Now, for you then to become this righteousness or for you to be seen to have righteousness, the only thing you need to do is just come into this space. Like if you'd come here, eh, where I am, you would be, you would be, you would you'd receive the light I'm receiving. You would be shone the way the, 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 the lights here are shining on me. So once you step into the environment of God, then you step into the environment of holiness. Then how do we become righteous? How do we work out our righteousness? It is by keeping the law? No, it is by accepting Christ and coming into his life and coming into his environment and coming into his presence. Once we come into the presence of God, once we come to the presence of Jesus Christ, then we receive his righteousness. We start radiating the righteousness of Christ. We start emanating the righteousness of Christ. And people around us, they will start feeling and seeing the glory of God in us because we have received because we have stepped into the environment of righteousness of God. Remember, when Moses stepped into the environment of God, God spoke to him and told him, Moses, remove your shoes for where you are standing is holy. Let me also remind you, when Moses climbed up the mountain and was with God receiving the Ten Commandments, when he came down, he was shining with the glory of God. Why? Not because Moses had become righteous, he had worked out his righteousness, but he spent time with the Lord. He was in the environment of God. He was in the presence of God. He had stepped into the environment of God. And once you get into the space of God, then you catch the glory of God. You become righteous. This is very interesting. That we, our, our, our righteousness avails nothing. And if anything, it is the righteousness of Christ that recovers us. Then we can be presentable before the Lord. Then we can have hope of, 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 of eternity through the righteousness of Jesus Christ. And so as we pray today, beginning this series of the righteousness of Christ, I want you to start thinking critically. How can you be right with God. Will you be right with God because you keep the law? Or will you be right with God because you brought yourself to God? You see, this is very simple. God is inviting you to come to him because he knows it is only when you come to him that you can receive the light of glory. You can receive the righteousness of Christ. You can receive the transformation, the renewing, the empowerment, the, tra you know, the, 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 the transformation that ought to happen within the mind and the heart of a believer. And so I'm inviting you this week to journey with the Christ. Stay at the feet of Jesus. Stay with him that you can radiate his glory. You can radiate his love. You can radiate his, his, his righteousness. You can look like him. 
You can look like you, you, you can look like Jesus because you stepped into his environment. It's my prayer, and my very sincere prayer, that God may teach me how to step into his environment that I may look like him. Is it your prayer that you may step into the environment of Christ, the environment of God, and that you may radiate his glory? Then I want to let you know that it is not in vain if you do that. Allow me to read a quote from my, my best author, uh, Ellen G. White. But, I mean, uh, pa, uh, a Testament to the Church, Volume 3, page 307, paragraph 1. She says, I saw, says the prophet, that the strength of the children of God is in their hum humility. When they are little in their own eyes, Jesus will be to them their strength and their righteousness. And God will prosper their labors. Let me read this quote one more time. Testament to the Church, Volume 3, page 307, paragraph 1. I saw, says the prophet, that the strength of the children of God is in their humility. When they are little in their eyes, their own eyes, Jesus will be to them their strength and their righteousness, and God will prosper their labors. Meaning, if we are too much on our own eyes, if we are too much on ourselves, if we are too much glorying ourselves, our abilities, our influence, and who we are and how much we know about Christ, then we diminish the presence of Christ in us. But as we diminish our presence, our self-worth and our self-impact, then we trigger God to, to, to dominate in our lives and increase himself in us. And the, Bible, the, the text here from the Spirit of, of Inspiration says, Christ we will then become our strength and our righteousness. And if that happens, she ends by saying, God will prosper our labor. Powerful quote. Join with me as we pray. Gracious Father in heaven, we are really seeking that we may receive the righteousness of Christ and as we journey on, you may prosper our labor. Here we are getting the secret that we need to allow ourselves to diminish, that we may dominate. That Lord, we will have nothing to glory in apart from Christ and Him crucified. And Lord, we are seeking this week to journey on with the righteousness of Christ. We are seeking, Lord, that we may disappear and you may appear in our lives. We are seeking that we may not be seen but you may be seen in our lives. Lord, we are seeking that you may preserve us with the knowledge that it is only when we step into a presence that we can be truly revived and we can be Christians and show the world that we are your servant and disciples. Lord, I pray that this morning, this afternoon, this evening, you may speak to my dear viewer in ways that they can understand and appreciate that we are not worthy without Christ. We are sinners and our very best of trial, we behave like Paul. We find ourselves being what is evil. But we say, glory be to the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for you, what you are and what you've been and what you shall be forever in our lives. And we can lean on your righteousness. We can be clothed in your righteousness. We shall be received into eternity. Thank you, Lord, how we yearn to live and dwell in the eternity of your righteousness. Don't teach us that we can surrender to you in the humility of our hearts, a contrite heart and spirit, that we will learn at the feet of Jesus and see him and you as you are and the usher into eternity, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you, my dear viewer, for waiting upon this program every day. And thank you. I want to invite you one more time to subscribe to our channel. If you have not, because it is when you subscribe, you are likely not to miss every day as we do this program. I also request you to share with as many as you can these messages. Then your contact, don't, don't mind, just share with as many as you can that many may be blessed. Remember the seven-member list. This is what I mean. 
we are choosing seven people we are praying for. Just put them under your list and you'll be praying for them as you journey through. Till tomorrow, the Lord bless you.